the advice that I give is that you can eat whatever you want, okay, but you have to earn it. Ah. So evolutionarily, you can only eat something that you've worked for, okay. So if you're a monkey and you want you have to eat a fruit, you have to climb a tree, right? If you're a tiger, you have to eat a deer, you have to hunt it, you have to kill it, then only you will eat it, correct? So whatever you worked for, you can eat. So eat whatever you want. If you're making it, if you are, uh, if you're cooking it, or cooking it, huh, huh. If you have made it, so you buy the raw materials, you cook it, you make it, you eat it, no problem. The problem is that you have not earned that packet of chips, right? You have not grown the potatoes, you have not even bought the potatoes, you have not cut them, you have not fried them, you have not put the masala on them, nothing. So our body, but our brain doesn't know that. So when our brain eats such a high calorie food. Our brain thinks that such a high calorie food means you have earned this high calorie food. So it gives you a lot of dopamine because high calorie food is very hard to come in the jungle. But here, just opening a packet of chips and eating it, our brain gives you so much dopamine that you've not deserved. Right? So no packet foods. Eat whatever you want, but no packet foods. According to me, out of all the diets, this is probably the best one. You cook and you eat whatever you want. Your body will get used to it, right? Over a period of time, the body will get used to it, especially if something that you've grown up with. But nobody's grown up with chips. It's a very new phenomenon. Evolutionarily, we are not used to such high density processed, processed foods. High fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I would my take on diet would be that everything cooked. It's fine. It's but, but at the time of stress eating, stressful eating, uh, alternative methods is, like um, okay, so let's say I, I have, let's say my patient, okay, mm. and I've said there's no snacks at all and they're stressed. They want mm. to bring the, you know, limbic uh, system to the prefrontal cortex. Thing. Yes. Okay, so when they do that, what do they, how, what else they can do? Uh, I have heard, read something about this vagal nerve stimulation and yes, all those things. Yes. Uh, that Valsalva manual and all those things help? Uh, so Valsalva doesn't help so much, but deep breathing helps. So when you stretch the diaphragm in uh, under your lungs, when you expand your lungs with air, your diaphragm gets stretched. The diaphragm will activate the vagus nerve and it will activate the parasympathetic nervous system. So if you take a deep breath, and you count from one to five and you exhale slowly and you keep doing this five times, your body will automatically shift from sympathetic to parasympathetic. So this is probably the simplest way. So when they say that if you're angry, you should count to 10 and take a deep breath. It is just this. You're angry, you're in sympathetic overdrive. You take a deep breath and you count to 10, you're coming back into parasympathetic. So coming back to parasympathetic means in your brain, you're going from limbic to prefrontal now you are calmer you have more control you will not say stupid things that you will regret later so this is the simplest way wow 